Mosier. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't. Um, so we've discussed a number of issues around the table tonight. One, raising minimum wage to $15, which actually to correct you, Devin, they did a statistical study and compared us to BC, and the living wage is actually about $20.82. And I wouldn't say that we are going to get there, I said. It no, no, no. Step in the right direction. Right, I understand that. What you're saying, you said it was a living wage. It actually is not a living wage of $15 an hour. It's $20.82. There is an actual study done for yeah. it. Okay. And your question, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to that. It's, multi, it's a multi prong, I'm sorry. I want the attention, too. <laughs> All eyes are on you. Thank you. So we've also talked about municipal and provincial issues this evening, and tax credits this evening. And we all want the same thing. But my observation and question is, why isn't the municipal member at the table speaking with you this evening? Because if it's municipal problems like paving and infrastructures that we're talking about, but we've done our part, now it's the municipality's turn. But the studies are done and it has to go back to province for review. We have a huge disconnect with too many layers of government, for one. So how are we addressing that? Two, how is government, assuming a $15 an hour living wage does happen, assume it does for a second, what is government going to do rather than putting it on the backs of business, because I am a consultant as well, and just to raise the costs, and I do agree with you, Devin, we need to make more money, because every time we've complained about it, prosperity has, in, has occurred with education and wage increases. Nobody can deny that. The more money I have, the better I can live. So what is government going to do rather than pushing it for tax credits on the business, for tax credits for consumers? And my next question to that is, what is government going to do to offset the living wage so that, say, it gets to $15 an hour, that is, can be balanced to the $20.82 an hour, so that you are, in fact, earning a living wage in the province of Nova Scotia? Because we all know we have the highest electricity rates in the country due to renewable sources. We have the highest taxes in the country, if not the second highest. So if we have the highest costs, yet some of the lowest advantages, what benefit is there if government is not working at the municipal level to address the core concerns that keep us here? Okay, thank you. I, I just want to point out it's provincial election, which is why the municipal people are not here. Oh yes, but we keep talking about municipal. Why? They, should they not be part of the discussion? Yes, they're not being voted for, but all the leaders are like, well, it's a municipal problem. I can't answer to that. Well, why I don't isn't think everyone here, here has said that, and we'll have another meeting about that. Okay? For sure. All right. So, a comment. Um, Kevin, you can go first. I'll take a stab at it, but uh, thanks, Jerry, for the question. Uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, get to the heart of the matter. Uh, Intergovernmental cooperation, if you can get wrap your tongue around that, is an important thing. Uh, anytime you have an alignment of priorities between uh, different levels of government, usually good things happen. So in terms of those uh, questions that you refer to uh, that to get deflected to the municipal government, the path of conversation between the province of Nova Scotia and our various uh, municipalities in the province goes usually through the Union of Nova Scotia Municipalities, the UNSM. Every year the, that great organization submits a list of priorities to the province, to the provincial government that cover off pretty well every provincial department. And uh, those discussions uh, usually set the tone for what happens over the next year or two or three. So it's important to note that um, your question about uh, how do we raise ourselves up, uh, I think the answer is simple. We need to, we need to generate economic activity. Uh, when everybody is empowered and enabled to, uh, to be the best person they can be, to be the best company they can be, to be the best community they can be, everybody wins. And uh, government's role is, uh, is simply that, to enable and empower uh, us all to find, uh, to find our potential. Thank you, Kevin. And the question goes to Devin. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, I'm gonna try to, to tap on, 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 on the multi-layered uh, uh, way that you, you, you pose that question. So uh, what, what I want to, to point out is that um, you, you made a, a mention about the $15 minimum wage, and I'll start with that. Um, the $15 minimum wage is something that the other parties have kind of said is crazy. 
Um, and, and I don't think it is. I think it's something that's a good step in the right direction. It's not going to solve the problem overnight, but it is going to be a step in the right direction to helping a lot of people. Um, and I want to kind of uh, give the, a, a two-layered approach here. So when you have someone that's hungry, um, it's very hard for them to, to, to develop any sort of self-esteem. And then if you, if so with, with, the, with the goal of trying to feed yourself, um, hard to uh, develop any sort of self-esteem, and then in terms uh, of going further than that, setting goals for yourself. Um, so w when you start at the top and work your way down, a lot of people aren't getting past that first hurdle. Um, same thing with money. So when you have money, you can then invest in, in things like I have in, in education and a, and a house. But if you don't have money and you're worried about that, you can't get to that level of where you would be willing and able to invest in those things. Then you, it, it affects your self-esteem. Um, and it, it's just a vicious cycle. So we really need to focus on the working people, the problems they're facing, and let's start there. We're not going to fix it all, but we're going to make a shot at trying to fi help a lot of people. Thank you. Randy is next. Yes, it sounds like uh, what I'm hearing here is uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. <laughs> and that, that stipulates that uh, we have to have a, a safe place to live, shelter, and food before we can move to step two, three, four, and five, and so on, and, and meet our own individual goals. I met a lady a number of years ago that drove, believe it or not, all the way from Sober Island to Dartmouth to work at Tim Hortons. Simply because there was no subsidy, she didn't want to go on welfare. And I tried to explain to her, welfare is not a privilege, it's a bloody right. If you can't get fed properly and heat your home properly, then somebody, i.e. government, should step in. Well, the government would say, where will we get the money? I say, waste, 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 waste. Eliminate the fat, get rid of the waste, get rid of the patronage, get rid of many other things that we could I could say here because that is what's going on governments waste more money than any other business in the world no, there's no my business would never have survived if I rented the way the government's being run in terms of finances I'd have been broke ten times over but as I say self alkalization can, can only be achieved if you meet the first basic needs thank you thank you Mary. and Patricia please so I guess, you know, Maslow's hierarchy needs, I certainly studied that in my, uh, my social work degree. I have to say that Kevin Murphy's approach to investing in, in our economy is kind of the key stepping stone to having a more prosperous eastern shore and uh, more businesses that can thrive, generating more money and putting more money into the economy, which I believe needs to happen first before you're going to see um, wages increased and certainly you mentioned uh, rate payers and the cost of power um, that is something that our government is committed to um, working on to reduce those rates and uh, working with the multiple layers of government we're talking about municipal um, federal and provincial all three levels of government because I said as I said earlier um, we are uh, uh, in this together, not to sound like a cliche, but we actually all are in this together and uh, we need to have more, build those relationships and uh, acknowledge them and, uh, and work within them for the betterment of Nova Scotians. So, thank you. Thank you.